East Stroud's University football with head coach Danny Dowds the Warriors 2-1 and one going into this week's trip to Cheney. And uh, coach, just want to start with uh, last week at Shippensburg, uh, you lose 41-31. Um, obviously, out of most games, you take some positives, some negatives. What are some of the things that uh, you have room for improvement for to be able to clean up, and what are some of the things you did extremely well on Saturday? Well, I thought uh, I thought we played good offense and good defense on on Saturday. I thought when, when you had gain your opponent by 200 yards, you get four turnovers yeah, on the clock for 38 minutes to 22 minutes. Uh, those are all pretty good signs that you're doing something right offensively and defensively. As far as clean up uh, special teams, uh, we got cleaned up a big time way in, in dealing with our coverage and how we go about doing it on our kickoff and our punt coverage. And uh, we've been working uh, very hard this week to say the least in, uh, in those particular categories right there and I hope to show some improvement on, on Saturday. I thought in particular last week uh, you played obviously an offense that had the returning Harlan Hill Award winner um, and their quarterback Zach Zuli. Uh You guys were able to do some things to kind of put some pressure on him defensively and on the offensive side when they got pressure on Matt Soltes, he was able to scramble out of it. Well, I, I mean, if you look at offensive day, I mean, come on, the uh, offense, uh, you know, you're talking about over 300 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. uh, Healy had a great day, I think he had about 189 yards. Uh, Matt Solis, uh, I think, had about 142 yards uh, in, in, in rushing and threw the ball in the rain mm -hmm. in, in, in that kind of a circumstance. Uh, that's, a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good day offensively when you have some guys in the, that can run and throw and, and have a pretty balanced attack by uh, running the ball. One, they don't have it, so they can't score. Mm -hmm. you know? And we got an opportunity to score. And meanwhile, you're taking time off the clock while we're doing it in, in that capacity. So I, th I thought those were some big pluses for us. Now, you know, that was the first time some of our young kids had been in a, in a, a, a tough ball game. We were called 15 rounders mm -hmm. in, in dealing with that. And uh, I think they got to be able to learn from that, to be able to understand that, they, you know, just because they walk on the field, doesn't mean they're a varsity player. They got to play like a varsity mm -hmm. player to get, get that varsity recognition. And uh, we have certainly uh, spent some time in uh, situations uh, indicating that this past week. Uh, through three games, you start to get a feeling for what your team does well and wanted to go through uh, five categories where you rank uh, fairly highly nationally, um, including uh, in turnover margin, uh, tied for first, uh, plus 2.3 per game. Time of possession, your second, more than 36 minutes. Uh, opponents converting third downs, your number six, about 22%. Very good number there. Uh, pass defense, uh, as far as opponents' completion percentage, under 46%, seventh nationally. And then the rushing yardage, uh, 17th overall, third in the conference. Really, those things all come together to be able to give you that, that high ranking and time of possession. Not only that, hey. Can we lock on a little wood right there where all those things you just mentioned right there to keep that thing going mm -hmm. to be able to do that? But that's a credit, and that's, that may be the personality of, the, of this particular club. The, and a couple things you, you look at, Greg. One, when you, when you go out to have a, a, a game plan, a couple of things. Don't let your ego get in a road of trying to win. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we like to throw the ball. Make no points about that. But hey, we got some running backs, and we got a nice offensive line. Those linemen have been blocking. Uh, extremely well for uh, Healy and some of the other guys that have had the opportunity. Well, if we have that kind of talent, well, why not utilize it? And, and uh, that's what we've been doing. And mm -hmm. Coach Twilliger, the offensive coordinator, has been a great uh, you know, advantage of taking uh, the, the talents of the individuals and uh, putting them in a position where they can, they can have their fullest uh, opportunity for success. Uh, Coach uh, Santella has been working on his offensive lineman overtime to be able to, to handle the, the running game and dealing with that. And, and you know, if people were going to put ten guys up on the line of scrimmage to stop the run, we'll go out and throw the ball. And you know, we've thrown the ball, and I think the last four or five years, about forty sometimes a game. So we're, we're not bashful about that. Mm -hmm. So you know, what the game gives us, we're going to take and, and, and have no qualms about that. And people say, well, we're not throwing the ball as much as, or with a number of yards. Well, no, we're not, but we're, we're gaining yards and we're having some opportunity for success on the ground. 
Well, we'll do that too, and, and, and have no qualms at all about trying to let our kids, with the talents that they have, and the combined talents of the whole group, to allow them to have success and put them in those situations where they have the greatest opportunity to have that success factor. And when you rack up that kind of advantage in time of possession, it really is a team effort because you're not getting the ball back unless you're getting the stops on third down. You're not getting the stops on third down unless you're forcing the opponent to throw incomplete passes less than 50%. You're not maintaining possession unless you're forcing turnovers and not giving it up. You've only given up one turnover so far this year. Again, knock on wood. Yes. But all those things kind of come together, and, and through three games, you're 30% essentially into your season now. Well, I mean, you know, that, that, those are the things that show your personality. You're correct in that, and that, that's one of those things that, hey, that's where we are, and we're going to keep uh, – uh, trying to have the success we've had in those particular areas right there. If somebody comes along and says, hey, you're, you're not going to do this, or we're not going to try to fit that round peg in a square hole someplace along the line, we'll take what they're going to give us and, and take advantage of it. And I think we have enough talent on this team right now, and we're growing that talent, which is exciting. And uh, to see those kids go out there every week and, and get better. And we're, we're, as we said when we started, we're a young team with experience, and we're getting more experience every week. And it's, it, it's, it's about time to, you know, we're just approaching October. And when you approach October, you usually see a young team take another step. And we're, I think we're about ready to take another step right now. And it'll be exciting to see those kids go out there and have that opportunity to do that. Uh, you've had 11 players make their first career start this season. Uh, anybody who has really stood out on on either side of the ball, a couple guys, you know, maybe who you felt like would have a chance, but you know, maybe have have exceeded some of the expectations of the coaching staff. Well, I, I think I think Healy has got to be the, the, the person. You know, last year he, he we redshirted him. He ran the service team. Uh, guys on defense would come back in, in the staff meetings and talk about, hey, you should have seen the movie made this uh, night uh, versus uh, such and such on a practice field. Well, the offensive uh, coaches saw that in the spring and developed uh, some attack with his talents and abilities. And that, that, that's, that's a prime example yeah. right there. And the top freshman running back right now in Division Two, more than 130 yards per game. So that's bearing it out on the field. And, and we, we, we thought he would be a, a fine uh, uh, opportunity to be able to play with the Warriors coming out of Long Island, mm -hmm. Thorpe Award winner, Thorpe Award winners. That, all that says is... He's the best football player in three and a half million people. Yeah, By and, way, and all in Nassau many, County. Yeah. That's, that, that's how many people live on Long Island mm -hmm. and Nassau and Suffolk counties out there to be yeah. able to do that. And he, he, he has shown every reason why he got that award. Uh, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, obviously Brian Thompson is your All-American, your returning PSAC East Defensive Player of the Year. Set the school record for career block kicks on Saturday, blocking the first extra point against Shippensburg. Uh, he really has been the last year and a half kind of the, the rock in the middle of your defense. He has, but I think uh, Brandon Catelli has, has done a fine job for us. John Noble's coming along uh, fine. Uh, we lost Terry Kadad, and uh, uh, Sam Trunzo stepped in and, mm -hmm. and has done a great job. Uh, and also, you got to look at uh, Cody Simcox, yeah. my middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, uh, he, he played last year and he, he lost some weight. He's come into his own. He is certainly uh, one of the leaders on defense. And then Anthony Singler in the, in the secondary would be another one of those guys. He's like having a coach on the field. You know, he, he knows his assignment. Everybody else is too in dealing with this. And Tron uh, Dobbs has had a great start to the season right there. But he's a young man, he's a sophomore. Uh, he, he's getting into the position yeah. a year ago almost uh, to the day he, he was a wide receiver we moved him over to the other side I think after the first game and after that he has just taken off and gotten nothing but better in, in dealing with that so some of those guys are guys that are coming along and dealing with that and then the, the, the old man of the defense uh, you know and Darius, uh, yeah. uh, Darius Jackson he he uh, has uh, certainly had a uh, a good start to the season mm -hmm. as a grad student. He's the only guy that we have. We have no seniors, so he's our grad student. And the rest of the guys, what you see is what you're going to get. Assignment football, as coaches say, 
what are the things that you guys have to do to combat that? Well, uh, several things. Uh, one, uh, I think Cheney uh, is coming along. Uh, coach has been there for three years. He's done a fine job. Mm -hmm. He's got them organized. He's got them, he's got the program on sound footing uh, right now. I'm sure that he needs some more help down there, but uh, he, he's got kids that, that are back. They're juniors and seniors. One of the things that we haven't seen over the years from Cheney is is that uh, opportunity to be able to say, hey, the, the, you know, we played a couple of years together. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 run that uh, Navy offense or West Point offense. I think they come out of Southern Georgia, and uh, with the uh, option, uh, they're going to pound that full back or the single back in the backfield up mm -hmm. inside and take wide splits to be able to kind of. You know, hey, look, if, if they can just get a little bit uh, a yeah. uh, piece of you, they can run by you then. And then they, they have the, the two slots that they can either set in motion and option or uh, fold them back inside and run kind of an isolation out of that. They run some quick pitch, go a little bit unbalanced, some play action. Uh, they're a fine opponent right now, and uh, we're going down there. And last time we were down there, we were fighting snow and everything else down there. Mm -hmm. in, in, in that. And I, as far as the weather forecast, it's supposed to be about 75 <laughs> degrees. So everybody's got a smile on their face at the Pocono yeah. nose right now going down there, but having some fun with that and, and dealing with that. But it'll be, a, it'll be a contest for us, and we want to make sure we're prepared for it. Uh, Warriors 2-1, and 0-1 uh, so far in the PSAC East, looking for a, a first divisional win and an opportunity to get back in the uh, – the mix in the PSAC uh, East as we uh, next home game is going to be in October. So, like you said, fall is uh, is approaching. Falls here, and uh, the Warriors going to Cheney to finish September. It really is, and we're looking forward to that. And that's the first uh, of two trips into that area. Eventually, we're going to play Westchester later in the season, so we'll get to know the locale down there, anyways, in in, in dealing with that. But it's, it's the next rung on the ladder, and we've got to be ready for the challenge. And we've got to be able to step up and be able to take it on, and it will be, uh, it will be a tough game for us, but we're looking forward to that uh, opportunity to go out and compete. All right, next time the Warriors are home, uh, October 5th, it'll be a, a full month since the season opener against ASC, and uh, week four coming up for the Warriors, so best of luck, Coach. Appreciate that. We might have to work overtime with you to make sure that uh, we get the, uh, some type of program out there to get their numbers so they, <laughs> that people didn't forget what, that, what those guys looked like in red jerseys when we play at home, too. Appreciate it. We'll keep everybody straight now. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Greg.